Welcome back. If you're just joining us, uh, this is Call My name is Robinson Okenya. Remember the first part of the show, we've taken a look at what is happening here locally. And uh, remember, we've taken a look at the Kenya Premier League and the Confed Cup Confederation Cup fixtures that we expect this afternoon in different countries. But right now, we'd like to get into some scouting here in the country. And uh, two scouts from England were in the country scouting for the crop of talent that we have. And Linda Rotuno managed to get a seat with them at the Gikambura grounds in Kikuyu, and uh, she filed this. So uh, today we have the 2018 trials uh, by Green Sports Africa, whereby uh, players will get a chance uh, to go uh, to the United States. Uh, apart from getting a college education, they'll be at the same time playing uh, competitive uh, football. And uh, joining me today, we have uh, uh, among the players, we have a few players, we have uh, the scout and we have an official and maybe we can uh, speak to uh, one of the officials from Green Sports Africa and he will uh, let us in on what the whole event is about. Uh, kindly introduce yourself and tell us what role you play in this event. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is George Oma, uh, co-founder of Green Sports Africa. Uh, so today here, basically, as you rightfully said, uh, we do have uh, 18, uh, 2018 trials. And basically what Green Sports is about, what we're doing here, is uh, based on the tournament that we have, uh, that we had in April, trying to give them the opportunity to make it. Um, as we know, I mean, we have so many talented players in and around the country and the, and the region, but uh, not enough of them get the opportunity. So with partners like SRUSA who are here today, then that makes it, makes it possible for them to, you know, advance their careers. Yeah. And maybe tell us how many events like this have taken uh, place before, maybe initiatives, similar initiatives by Green Sports Africa. Uh, it's the second time we're doing uh, the trials. Uh, we, we had one last year, um, and you know, it was a lot of positives. It was the first time. Uh, so for, for us to do this now, uh, to do it the right way, and hopefully uh, from this we can have uh, some, some, some of the players, uh, some of the fantastic quality players here uh, to actually uh, get the opportunity to, to, to start their, their careers outside uh, the, the, the continent. Uh, considering uh, this the other time you did this, uh, mm -hmm. how how was how is the progress so far? Um, I mean, uh, there's a lot of progress in the sense that uh, uh, in Europe, uh, the first time we brought a scout from Europe, um, and he gave us a lot of feedback in terms of uh, what what it is that uh, that is required. Um, you know, a lot of these players have worked on those things, and uh, um, I, I don't want to speak for Chris uh, from SRUSA, but I, I think there's been a lot of progress uh, in terms of um, what exactly is possible uh, in in Europe and in the US. It's a bit different in terms of what they look at, uh, and you know, because of some of the regulations um, as well uh, for depending on where the player go for so that's why we felt uh, you know this this particular chance the second time round uh, we will definitely get it right and there's a match that has just uh, taken place. Yeah. Maybe fill us in on what that was all about. Okay, so uh, here today we have two categories. We have the under-15s and then we also have the under eighteen. So the first game that just ended is a uh, under-15 select team versus one of the local academies here. So the select team is basically, as I said, uh, the best 18 players uh, from the tournament that happened about three weeks ago. Um, so based on that, there's been statistics, uh, notes been taken uh, by Chris, SRUSA, and the rest of the scouting team. Uh, and of course, based on that, and the, the, the parameters uh, by uh, August. Uh, one of them will be on, on, on the next flight to America. So, and now we're just about to start the under-18 uh, game as well. Um, and then the uh, same thing. So yesterday uh, uh, we was the first day and today is uh, the final day. So from the compilation of all of that is when we get uh, the, the cream of the crop. Okay, yeah. thank you very thank much. You so, much. Uh, so uh, on to the next person. We have uh, the scout. Maybe uh, introduce yeah, uh, yourself. Well, thank you for having me on. Uh, my name is Chris Cousins. I'm from Sports Recruiting USA, which is the company that's there. Uh, I'm the scout from American Colleges. So we, we, we travel the world looking for players. Um, doesn't matter where they're from, what country, as long as they're good footballers and good academics. So um, I've been invited by Green Sports, George and uh, Kasim have asked me to come um, for the weekend to Kenya from England. <laughs> it's a long, a long distance, but it's a nice place. I enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, I've, I've come to watch these trials really, really well organised. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I thought some players might be bad, some players might be good, but overall the quality is actually a lot better than I thought it'd be. Uh, so I'm really, I'm actually, I'm actually excited that there's some players here who 
to be honest with you, could go on to play in college in America, but I'm looking at some guys, a professional, I'm, I've got professional connections as well, so I've, I've been thinking like maybe helping them try and connect with the right people um, outside of the, the, the America system, uh, looking in England or Europe and stuff like that. But yeah, um, Green Sports have been really helpful. They invited me over. Um, I've never been to Kenya before personally. Um, it's a beautiful country and beautiful people. And yeah, I'm excited to see what the rest of today will happen and we'll go from there. And maybe what are your expectations for the players who are uh, in the field today and maybe since yesterday, what have you seen so far? Well, like I said, I, I expected the standard to be lower than it is and I don't know why, maybe by perceptions, and, but uh, the, the standard's been higher. Um, there's some very good players, so from what will happen from today, hopefully players are playing better today. Since yesterday was very nervous. Today they're, more, they're a lot more happier, and which is good. So tomorrow, uh, today we'll see what happens the rest of the afternoon, uh, and from that we'll make we'll make some decisions with George and start helping people and start saying, look, here's what we can do and put you towards America or wherever. So hopefully it's a, a lot of opportunities for people, um, not to not to leave the country in a bad way, but to try new things and hopefully experience new opportunities. And based on your experience as a scout, how is the progress of such plans once they get to go abroad uh, for education and at uh, some time uh, competitive uh, competition? Well, for me, I'm very biased towards like playing professionally is good, but there's no backup. There's no education backup. So I, so I went through the American system myself uh, and you get an education, a degree, but you get football at a high level as well. So if the football doesn't work, you've got a degree. So that's for me, that's really it's so important for families and children and young adults to do that. Uh, and I think everyone should do that in professional academies. They should have an education as well and they don't do that. So I think for, for Kenyan people, uh, education is very important. So mixing the football and the education together, then who knows what can happen. And uh, how often do scouted players get uh, the exposure to professional football? Oh, all, all the time. So going into the Ameri so for example in Europe, if you're not in the first team of a professional team by 18 years old, you're not really wanted. So a lot of people go to America because you get 18 to 22 where you're getting the degree, but then you get picked to go professional at 22, 21. So you get four more years of development, maybe physically and mentally. And um, and like I say, it's just the progression there is there's a lot more opportunities. So if you find in Kenya, there's not many doors open for football professionally. Go to another country like America, get the degree, and then it opens more doors. And who knows, world well is your And why Kenya specifically? Well, so Kim, who works for Green Sports, I, I worked with him in Florida. So he said to me, he goes, there's players here, come over and check them out. So I did. And uh, that's why I, I, I've obviously thought about Kenya in the past, but you need sometimes that person to tell you. And obviously Kim's, Kim's been through the system himself. I trust him. He's a good guy. Uh, and then he invited me over, so I thought, check it out. So, yeah. And maybe finally, con uh, considering the state of our fields uh, here in Kenya, how would you say these players, uh, what are their standards in terms of what they get to experience resource-wise? Well, facility and resource-wise, I mean, to be fair, this is not a bad facility um, for, for, for what I've seen around. But um, resource-wise, the facilities in America, the 100,000 seat stadiums, um, the facilities are a lot better. Um, and that's just the countries are more, a bit more developed in terms of sports. Um, so, yeah, they get access to that. The good thing about playing on bad surfaces is... In, 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 in certain countries is people learn skills of where the, in, in England for example or in America they, they learn the ball will just roll to them flat it will never bobble but here you don't know where it's going to bobble so you get your skills higher does that make sense so people learn better skills in countries that don't have the facilities so there's, pl there's pros and cons to every single place but going to America better facilities it's 100% thank you so much, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, we have some of the players too and maybe uh, sorry this is one of the coaches uh, kindly go ahead introduce yourself and tell us uh, what have you seen so far ah, okay my name is john thomas nyakundi i've uh, been preparing the teams for the trials this weekend and like yeah there's a lot of very good talent out there the problem is that for most of these guys it'll be very hard to find them in the pipeline for maybe the clubs or the national team that's what we're trying to do here yeah and uh being a coach, we have a number of players, a number rather a number of teams who have gone through a lot just to get uh, here today. So, in terms of player standards, how would you say uh, these players? What are they? What what level are are they in for them to get to a scouted scouting level? Um, well, for them to get here, they each of these players played the tournament we had. Then we scouted them from there. We formed the team. So. 
they're pretty good. Uh, as the scout said yesterday, if this was in a different country, most of these players would be in academies already in the pipeline uh, on their way to playing for the senior teams. So yeah, they're a pretty good level. I was very impressed, especially the under-15 kids. Very good. Yeah. And uh, this uh, is an event that has uh, been running since uh, yesterday all through to today, and we understand there are different categories. So is the scouting level the same for both categories, or there is a way it is done differently? Um, so, yeah, we have two age groups, the under-15s and the under-18s. Um, I didn't say there's too much of a difference. It's just that we look at the level, the overall level from the tournament we had, then we picked the best uh, about 15 players from each category, yeah. And you are the coach, and I understand the expectations on both sides, both from the uh, scout and also from you. What are your expectations being a coach for the teams around? Uh, my expectation is, I guess, the same as with everyone in the organization. We just want to try get as many players opportunities as we can. Yeah, so if, I mean, for if you can get your talent to get you a college scholarship, that's something pretty big. It's better than just sitting at home doing nothing, <laughs> letting your talent go to waste, yeah. The, the, getting uh, an opportunity to play abroad uh, and study abroad is one thing, and getting there and progressing is the other. So how do these players fare on once they're out of uh, the country's borders? Um... That just is down to the individual. I mean, the most we can do is get you the opportunity. But once you're there, you're placed in a system with coaches and support staff and, you know, classes you have to make. That's down to the individual. So while we're here, we try as the coaches to give them as much as we can in terms of, first of all, a bit of knowledge on the field, but also just teaching them about the good habits, what it takes to be a professional. So we try our best to do that, but once they're out on their own, I guess it's down to the individual, and we hope for the best. Them, yeah. I'm sure everyone uh, wonders at some point what happens to these players once they get there and they do not meet uh, the set expectations. Uh, are they brought back to the country, or what exactly goes on? Uh, it depends. Different people. So there's guys who've gone out and come back. But, yeah, I guess it, it depends on how it goes. If you don't make the grade out there, you don't make the grade, what else is left, I guess? You just come back. But if you go out there, you get a college education, you make it back, you, you've, get, you've gained something. You can, yeah. It's happening. Um, in this kind of trials, um, this is my first time considering, like, with green sports. Um, it's actually not my first time, it's my second time. The first time, I think it was around 2016, we went to Tanzania for trials. We played three matches there. Yeah, so this is the second time with green sports. What is the difference between what uh, you went through the first time and the second time? Um, the first time, it wasn't, we didn't really have like a well-organized team. So we went there just from the tournaments, people that were scouted from there. We didn't really train together and we didn't play together well. So, but then this time it's different because it's a club now. It's like we're now settled. We know we play together like three times a week. So it's better, like the communication, the relationship with the players is better. So yeah, we're playing better together. And what are your expectations maybe at the end of the day? Um, at the end of the day, I expect most of my most of my teammates to be scouted, of course, because it's like a very good thing for all of us. Most of us are just finishing year 13, year 11, so it would be a great thing going to the US to continue football because, like here, it's not bad, but then in the US it's better. So I expect us to have this opportunity that most of my teammates, if if possible, all of us, that we go there to be able to show what you can do. Other than just get, uh, getting an ex exposure to better education and better football, uh, what else do you gain from such events? Um, it's experience, to be honest, because like most of the times we're playing seven-a-side football, we're playing five-a-side football. I feel like this kind of environment, this kind of chance to play 11 aside is really good because most of us we usually play 7 aside which is way different to 11 aside so being given this opportunity to play 11 aside it helps us build into our like 
our game because we are not going to play seven aside in the future because all of us want to become professional footballers. So I feel like this really helps us a lot with what we want to achieve in the future rather than just playing seven aside. This uh, is uh, this are just uh, some of the players who, who are hoping to get scouted at the end of the day, and this is just one among the various scouting uh, events that we have in the country, whereby you get uh, um, other professional maybe coaches, uh, professional uh, footballers, for example, coming from abroad uh, to look for people who, at the end of the day, will be able to get an educational scholarship as well as a chance to play uh, competitive uh, football. And finally, this may lead to ex exposure uh, to the professional football realm. And it is a good initiative, especially in the country. And considering there are a number of resources which uh, are, are being... Uh, which are coming up rather to ensure that uh, upcoming footballers and also professional footballers in the same line of duty get nothing but the best. So uh, we hope for the best at the end of the day. Back to you, Robinson. Well, thanks a lot, Linda Rotuno, right there at the Gikambura grounds where Green Sport Africa was uh, having uh, some uh, scouts from uh, the United States and uh, England who came to see the crop of talent we have in football here in the country. So now